Nice to be together again. Um, a topic I would like to speak about now is uh, the feeling of stillness when students spoke about that in, on the Ascension Road. And uh, I'm curious about how uh, this can be approached from the perspective of uh, the practice. Because there is a stillness that a student feels when practicing these exercises. And um, what is that all about? Um, I thought about <coughs> making a, sh a search in the document I'm working on for the code book and look for stillness. So that is Wasson spoke about the stillness of your heart where every moment, everything that has ever been created is present in the now. Then we have the Merkaya song speak about the focus on the power by its very nature, its focus on virtues, focus on that which must arise out of the stillness that is your akene. So we have the heart center, which is the akene, and there is where we find the stillness. And then, my document, <laughs> which is going to happen um, uh, to be a book, I hope soon. This is beautiful to work with this material. And um, it's also beautiful to share with you what we do with it. So, we have now the Solaris Sun speaking about freedom. This is in how peace comes, uh, how peace came on to earth, came to earth, sorry. Um, she speaks about your freedom uh, that is will never be taken, taken away from you. And she speaks about the true freedom coming from within. It is a stillness, a harmony, that's what she said. That it is not the ab ability for you to follow uh, your very impulse generated by your mental capacity. It just comes from a different space. It comes from the Ba and Va uh, makes you reach a state of freedom. So, there is much to say again about it, but what I wanted to uh, um, take that to is uh, what again the Surari Sun spoke about um, in the Garden of Eden recording in 2007. Stillness is about non-definition, is about no thing. She speaks about object and I'm going to uh, the core of the object and uh, find the nothingness in this object and speak about the um, object not wanting to be separated from you. So. Um, there is a merge of energy um, that you uh, can practice, certainly. And um, what, um, of course, reminds me when she spoke about the non-definition and nothing, I thought it was relating, related to ba, to joy, because joy, ba, is about no thing inside and nothing outside after practicing the Da, which is love. Nothing happened before, nothing happened after. <coughs> you have the state of Ba that uh, is basically um, means that there is nothing inside and there is nothing outside. You let go of 
uh, the space concept. When you miss that, you let go of the time concept. Nothing happened before and then nothing happened after you step in the now moment. That brings a different perspective on what is outside and what is inside. So, because of the non uh, nothingness that the uh, Solari Sansari <laughs> speaks about, I thought that um, stillness was more related to the ingredient of joy. But then, um, of course, there is uh, this state of Va that gives the freedom and the state of va, uh, um, it's about letting go of a uh, uh, perspective on others and uh, then the state uh, makes you feel united, it makes, it makes you feel one with everything <clears throat> and then of course uh, uh, the duality of the dualistic field is also lived because uh, when you let go of the separation between uh, yourself and the other, of course, you reach a state of unity with everything. It's a concept, it's a beautiful way to work with metaphysical, these are um, cosmic beings that are teaching us, and I think they deserve uh, to be heard and to be taken, taken uh, when they say seriously. So I will um, read the end of the quote I started with when uh, Solaris sang uh, in How Peace Came to Earth uh, finishes um, the point of speaking about stillness. Um, so freedom, true freedom is within, it is a stillness, a harmony. True freedom is choosing the way home, home is where your heart is. True freedom is a state of discipline in which you allow constant momentum on the path towards infinity. That says it all. So maybe what we can do is finish um, with making you aware um, of what was also shared about uh, this active ingredient, starting with the ba and va, which are love, joy and freedom as active ingredients. And this is something you invoke in yourself and this are being, this are consciousness, these are not uh, just words of course, and, uh, it's just much more than what your mind can figure out, your mind is not going to figure out anything about love, it's just not there, you don't have an understanding, your heart will take you there. <laughs> Um, so this stillness is not about nothingness, it's about nothingness and everythingness. And um, I wish we can uh, reach this state together for everyone, because uh, it is such a blessing to be in this step, of course, um, and I wish everyone can uh, follow this material in order to uh, have amazing experiences with it. It happens to me, so uh, it has to happen to you too. Mm -hmm. I hope it helps. Takaya, Sanake, Hoanilish, Msalae. Welcome to the Sanake, today I'd like to share with you some insights and my experience 
um, with the emotional field. Um, maybe it's good that I first tell you that the emotional field has always been quite active uh, within this personality. Um, and maybe to give a little bit of an explanation uh, in case you do not really know how it works with the emotional field. Uh, like for instance, if you see something that startles, startles you uh, and that gives you the creeps, well then, you know, it gets, gives you the bodily reaction, well that's your emotional field. Same for instance, um, I can for instance have that when if if there is a really bad headache or um and then you can almost go into a panic of that and then it um your whole body can cramp up or you know i'm i'm exaggerating to make it clear but and then when you breathe through that and go more to a relaxation um yeah the amplification of the pain that you created subsides again and things feel very different. This reaction of the emotional field um, is of course also created by our own thoughts. Um, so to change it you need to look at your thoughts. I want to give you an example of that. Um, like one of these nights I, I came uh, I wanted to go to rest and although I really am not that bad with spiders, uh, there was this creepy looking one right above where I would be with my head in my bed. And when I bravely wanted to take it away, it didn't work. So um, there I was, you know, talking to myself, um, like, you know, in the awareness of the Ascension student, uh, I asked myself why I created it in the first place. And um, was telling myself you know we're all one it's okay and when I'll be asleep um, everything around me turns into a waveform and then even you know on a 3d level um, in 2007 um, when we were in Hawaii with the Yeshua Sun and the fellowship um, there was this uh, open bedroom uh, with no windows Hawaiian style and it was I mean I tell you there were insects I didn't know, even know the existence of, and there were many, and yet uh, I chose to sleep there, to have that experience of almost sleeping in nature. And I could just also um, allow all of these animals to be there and not have it impact me. And then, of course, also, even on the 3D level, um, I mean, you know it's an irrational fear. So after I've had this whole conversation with myself, I really am okay and I just go to sleep. But it also shows me, like if I can do that in that moment with me, my emotional field, then I can do that in other moments as well. You know, also when it's about a residue of insecurity or uh, what have you not. So, and I'm sharing it with you. Um, in the hopes it, you know, it might help you too. And then on top of that, what I would like to uh, speak about today is when I was working with uh, the Pleiadian meditation of the Oyera Sankha, there were two things that uh, struck me. Um, he speaks about the 144 Achenaic cells uh, behind the thymus. Now that is something that the Cosmic 12 already spoke about a long time ago and they gave us the exercise to um, from those 144 akinaic cells create uh, infinity signs all the way through your body to all the cells uh, to assist them to to going back to the original template because that is your original source they said is in your akine or in these akinaic cells but what I'd never heard before is that he said that also the higher soul um, is there. And, you know, now that I've heard that, of course, that makes all the sense, all the sense in the world. If that is where um, my, yeah, if that is where these sort, that the, of course, our higher selves are, is, that is our source. 
Um, and then another thing he said, and um, that is also something that Yeshua some already uh, told me like a really long time ago. Um, I would look in the sky and see those dots and he would explain to me that that was magnetism and that I could um, focus on that and have that interact with me because magnetism as we know is love and um, that that would be a good way to yeah to stay in your heart um, now also the Oya de Sanka spoke about it and he said um, that you know as human beings there is no other way than that our magnetic field is around us all the time and that it is so easy to uh, connect to that and when I do it, it it really is incredible when I just remember that I have that magnetic field around me and I focus on that there is immediately the interaction with the heart space and um, I feel myself become softer and um, yeah, I start beaming actually immediately. So all of that together, um, yeah, is again helping me um, to progress and to drop more and more of the things that we do not need anymore. Thank you for listening. I will be back again soon. Much love. Welcome to Ascension Road. Sana K. Hello, this is the Amber Sun sitting in the beautiful uh, grounds of our Messiah World, World Ascension Training Center in Zeeland, the Netherlands, on my uh, new Ascension block. I'm feeling really great. I have a few little things to share. Hopefully I'll be really brief. And um, it's just so, so lovely to connect. So um, thank you for that. Um, I've been thinking about service to the whole. And I've also been thinking about focus and how incredible it feels um, to be focusing on service to the whole, basically. Uh, so I was thinking about service to the whole because uh, I thought like, God, if I could share with other people with other people how incredible this is and how it feels so good to be in service and we're really doing some awesome service and people are so all over the world wanting things to be better and different and have really beautiful service projects in their hearts and souls you know they would just really be jazzed by uh, our ascension journals and what we're doing here and maybe come and want to ascend as well so uh, that was just thought or that I had and I wanted to I was thinking about that so um, from my own perspective I I never actually until recently really considered the difference between service to others and service to the whole we often would share that or would be said in a teaching or something uh, in a journal or, or we would write service to others and service to the whole but just sort of like uh, not really uh, focusing on the, the, the truth or fullness of what that meant well we are here in service to the whole I totally get that now and uh, that is because we are focusing on expanding all of reality all of consciousness all of creation we have an opportunity here to embrace our creator self and to keep going to celebrate that to do everything that we possibly can uh, to get the work out to support the Bakun Yinsan who is doing a mass massive amount of work um, on behalf of uh, humanity and life. Um, so that's my commitment that I'm just going to keep doing that and invite you on board as well if you feel those things. But the other part that I want to say on the service part besides service is focus because it does take focus. And it's not so much about how I started out with feeling uncomfortable because I knew I wasn't applying myself as much as I could. So not doing something, not being able to uh, do what Paolo Cezanne always said, that, that um, the only uh, mistake a student, ascension student makes is not being consistent and continuous, practicing consistency and continuity with their ascension practice. Well, where, where it's changing now uh, with so many, for so many levels, in, in, including the, the launch of um, Ascension Road or Metaphysical Reality Show, is that I'm really 
feeling um, that it's, it's, it's not about what we're not doing. It really is about the state of being that we are choosing um, moment by moment by moment in the illusion of time. Uh, how are we creating our reality? How are we reacting to people? What are we expressing? Are we expressing Da, which would be in Zaya, Da, love, express? Are we joyful? Are we sharing and expressing truth? And then um, we just go through the list of sun ingredients. Is that real for us? Or I should talk about me. Is that real? Am I making it real? Or am I forgetting something? So yes, there is a forgetting here or there. Uh, we have the tools um, to, to change that. And it's not difficult. It's never difficult. It's all about love. And it's about service to the whole. And those two things and all the active ingredients expressed in service to the whole and it's, it's just the, the cat's meow for me if you know that term probably dating myself um, that's really really all I wanted to say I wanted to talk about how incredible it is I'm looking forward to everything I want to express my um, deep gratitude to Papa Insan for everything that she does she shows us what love is all of the time so uh, you, you she, she, and, and she, and what she puts together for um, the entire world, for all of creation, is just, it just, it just melts my heart, um, and I'm, I'm very grateful. So I wanted to share that. I'm grateful for the uh, Ascension students that we interact with here, and I look forward to connecting. And focus, my focus will be everything on service to the whole, and that's my commitment. That's who I am. Take care. Welcome to Ascension Road. So my cat, oh, I'm English. I'm sorry. Uh, today, just to keep the flow going with this um, episode, I would like to speak about something that will be, I think, very quick to say, but when I realized this, uh, it felt like something important to realize. <clears throat> it's about the circle of awareness. At least it came this way, me thinking about the past of the self and the past of the other and the world. So, it came up that um, I thought about a memory that you have a com in common uh, with someone from the perspective of the other for yourself let's say this is someone that was with you from the perspective of this person you are the other so it took me to understand maybe a different layer of unity or uh, something like and they blend together in a beautiful way. We just, uh, not that we need proofs that we are just one, of course, but you can uh, actually realize with, with just this observation that uh, in this case there is no real separation because the other and yourself are in this case in the past as in the future too, if you will have a, a project with someone, this project, projection in the future, will uh, take you to have the other seeing you as the other and, and you seeing the other as the other. <laughs> I think it would be very interesting to have uh, Zenit Life speaking about this. Um, because, of course, the circle of awareness is a very important um, tool to use. It takes you in the now moment, just in the center. Just to say it is a sphere, because where there is a circle of awareness or of whatever, there is a sphere. So I'm thinking a lot about this infinity sphere, and as well as 
son spoke about this exercise she gave and now I'm uh, I'm getting all over uh, information that was uh, put on before like with the stream we had an example of a uh, uh, session that comes from 2006 to 2007 9 and um, they speak so much about spheres and circles so working with the infinity sphere exercise with all of this I really think that it's going to be quite uh, an interesting follow-up of uh, this circle of awareness can we actually work with the infinity sphere exercise seeing the now moment in the circle and then the, the sphere of the awareness around will shrink the center will expand and in the middle it will link and shift reality well um, I think I will have the answer uh, thank you for listening uh, I wish you a beautiful day now it's almost night here but I wish you a beautiful moment which is uh, what we call here Ho Hami, the perfect moment. <laughs> I'm gonna get ready because the stream tonight is uh, in the interim with Dasor Alisan and I really don't want to miss this one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pekaya, Senaki. Welcome to Ascension Road. Senaki. Today I'd like to speak about something I really am still exploring myself, uh, but it made me again aware of how, uh, how even on a personality level, everything is so connected. Um, I will give you the example. I was in conversation with Dapak Rienson a few evenings ago, and we spoke about, um, let's say for a job situation, um, what would compel me uh, to do so or what would be important or what was important in that for me and then i mentioned uh, that it needed to be a bit of a challenge because that would make it more fulfilling it would make it more worthwhile um, i would learn you know all of these things that you could say are quite good traits uh, in a job situation. Um, but then Dapak Rienson made me aware of the fact that that attitude, let's call it that package of traits, the attitude that goes for, of which I believed uh, was for that situation, how that possibly um, impacted all of my reality also in other situations. I have, for instance, shared before um, that it sometimes feels like there is too little time to do all of the things I want to do. While, you know, I've also shared about the loops of time being created. So, I, you know, I was already working with that. But now this insight um, is helping with that uh, very much as well and I am um, observing myself um, feeling my, and especially the, the the feeling I have when I am doing things now um, I'm trying to stay aware of the fact to not take it to that level because um, what Apak Rui and some and myself spoke of is how of course how your attitude how that's like your package of belief systems in that that of course um, decides how you perceive reality and how you perceive reality <clears throat> decides how you create reality um, so there is much for me uh, to explore uh, i am still doing so and i will certainly uh, get back to you about it but i just already wanted to share with you because i believe that this is really not a, a unique trait um i guess 
it's a bit that, that all of humanity feels you know um it's only good if it was challenging and it, it's just so really not needed we are making it so much more difficult on ourselves than it has to be um and maybe you have other maybe this for you uh, clicks in in other areas as well that you start exploring how um, certain traits that you think were connected to something actually also influence all of the other areas of your reality yeah i will be back um, i wish you um, happy and fruitful uh, exploration um, have a great day Sanaki. Welcome to Ascension Road. Sunny As I was going through one of the recordings we made with Ascended Life, there was a piece that really struck me and it was about reality creation and how we literally create reality with our words. Um, it was just something that was more or less casually said uh, by one of our students, like, I am looking forward to whatever it was in that moment. It's a, a sentence we all use a lot. I'm looking forward to a session. I'm looking forward to seeing you, <clears throat> whatever it may be. And then Dr. Queenson pointed something very interesting out. She said, uh, if you say I'm looking forward to, you take something that is already a reality within you, something that has been created, otherwise you couldn't express it, uh, that you were looking forward to that event happening. But you're taking that from a, a certainty within and put it into the future therefore making it into a potential again so it may or may not happen you're basically expressing a desire um, a desire uh, because it, it's you are you that you are also expressing that it is not here now I am looking forward to, means it is not here now for you. And that is very interesting. That we, uh, so basically what then, what then happens is something can or cannot happen or may or may not happen. Um, because, and, and that is so often we do that with so many things. Um, like for example, I don't know. I can't. How often do we not um, reinforce an old belief system, an old habitual way of expressing ourselves? And therefore, uh, I think we spoke about that the other day with the Tara Sun and the Grey Sun. And therefore, uh, for um, prolonging that. Um, or reinforcing that you can't do something or you don't know something, whereas we all know that is not the case, really. So I just it just really um, uh, intrigues me because where there's so many things we um, so easily say, not realizing what we're actually doing with that. Um, then rather than um, really expressing uh, from the heart, we express something from the head, basically, because, um, yeah, it's, it's, we're not here now if we express it like that. So we're also out of the circle of awareness. Um, uh, and and it's, 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 it's funny because we, we, uh, we kind of say that um, because we think it's a joyful thing. Oh, I'm looking forward to 
seeing you all. We're looking forward to uh, you recording that or whatever it might be. Not really realizing what we're doing with that. So I just thought um, I share that with you because it really uh, uh, made me aware again of how to express myself um, in a conscious way and be careful of what we say because words cast spells as Doya Dasanka said a long time ago. So um, I just wanted to share that with you to for you to have a look at how you are working with these things. Thank you. Sanaki. Sanaki, just popping in and to express my uh, gratitude towards Ascendant Life and also to all of you who's watching the videos, how are you doing with the teachings, uh, do you listen on a daily basis, how do you work with it, do you understand the material, uh, these you can ask questions whenever you want. I, I feel great in this moment uh, because I'm working with neutrality. Whatever thought comes in, I see it as a neutral, neutral concept. Uh, no, I just feel great. Life, life is beautiful. It's, it's, it's all in your head. If you see the circle of awareness, if you go to a past event or future event, it, it's, it's not even, it's not even true. It's all illusion. It's uh, the only moment is the now moment. What happens now? That's the only truth. Yeah, I'm enjoying the nature here. It's really beautiful. Everything is. Nice to be together as always. Today I'm going to speak about <laughs> breaking the code of the matrix and uh, what I discovered um, quite recently on 25th of June 2023, so the last one uh, that the stream uh, released Dalenwaya-san and the story of the Matrix, Menei and Yiddish. What happened with this uh, stream was quite intense for me in terms of uh, feeling the exercise at the end of the session that was so intense in terms of information given and uh, a new understanding of um, what the matrix was and, and did and uh, well the whole story is on the website I really truly uh, I'm gonna assume that you listen to it or you know the story of the matrix I'm not going to go with details I just wanted to share my experience about this session which uh, is certainly not the first time I listened to it last June, but um, is the first time I understood something that could be put into practice today with a different well, training, a different layer maybe of what I can now understand because uh, the study of the past started to be released so whatever the reason, uh, what I wanted to start with is um, in her meditation for the heart, Akaya san said that we were not supposed, she's speaking about this planetary system, we were not supposed to be inserted in this reality sphere as um, this earth, we when we just came to break the code, the matrix. We were inserted in this reality in order to break the code. Oh, I took that very seriously as 
I normally do with Ascended Life and all all this information. Uh, so <clears throat> I took that very seriously, but I didn't realize that the code was already given to me. Mm -hmm. So um, I had some keys, and of course I wake, I walk my way through um, my little maze in order to find uh, the code that needed to be broken. It's just a little bit metaphorical, but not that much. So, what happened uh, last June, I understood um, that actually the matrix herself, of what is called the matrix, with it, with, which is the being called Meneya Ish that are uh, has been very much abused, very much shut down, like many, but Matrix, it's just um, the twisted version of what she became because of this abuse. Her divinity was taken out of herself. I can cry again. Mm. But you know, it happened to all of us. That's what the, the Lemoya son explained. So, apart from being extremely touching, it's also uh, it gives a lot of information about the 12th uh, vibration. And um, I'm not going to uh, speak much about this, but it's important uh, to realize that uh, much more information about what the true matrix is, is, is actually there, explained very quick, very clearly, um, and give us a way for the first time, for millions of years, I'm sure, I don't know, that was, and didn't want to uh, really insist on uh, from when, when it happened, that uh, he said that actually was the creation of our mind that uh, it happened there. Whenever it happened, the fact is that we could do something about it, and this exercise it's all about forgiveness. What was extremely uh, important for me. Um, is to rediscover another part of myself that didn't see um, the code that was given as an enormous amount of um, energy relief, something that was holding on without having any clue holding on the fact that um, death and form as part of the illusion uh, were totally incompatible in my system. I saw that form uh, it's not real, I saw that death is not real, I saw and understood certainly a deeper reason of why a matrix system will put that in place. But I never, in 2008 probably, I did, but didn't understand the deeper uh, uh, meaning of, of that being a uh, very important um, exercise to follow. Um, so, the illusion of death and the illusion of form cannot cannot be uh, at the same time in your system. You cannot believe in your existence and believe in the end of your existence. That not being there doesn't make sense, but it does make a lot of sense once you know when when you receive the information, then everything becomes very clear, isn't it? So that what happened to me. What I wanted to share is um, 
where there are, there are these light waves that comes and uh, maintain you in the right uh, uh, space for this exercise to be happening uh, in a proper way and to keep you safe. The forgiveness um, is what is crucial there and many other points that you will discover for yourself. The, the thing I actually was uh, extremely surprised about is to discover how much similarity, uh, just the same exercise, the similarity between what Dalimoyer Sam explained when he is speaking about the spherical uh, edge of what he is holding on as the tachyonic border that is going to shrink with him her breathing in and breathing out. I have to say, I thought I didn't breathe for all that time either. It felt so powerful. But that's just my experience. Uh, what in the practice happened is this exercise is exactly similar than the uh, spherical container of love that the infinity sphere exercise that Solaris Sun spoke about, about the art of portal travel. This just uh, starting to um, break through this information, the next one is going to be even more amazing, for sure. <laughs> the thing is, <clears throat> the spherical, the spherical uh, understanding of the geometry who you are with the torus field and all it makes it like extremely um, efficient in terms of expanding expanding energy or whatever you want to work with um, your heart you will have with a visual of a sphere uh, like uh, something extremely uniform in the energy there is no much way uh, to find a corner there that you cannot reach just to say something it, it's just so very interesting how the spherical and the circles are coming and um, now this information given by the Solaris Sun is like putting all of it together that we see that for this, the, the study of the power that is relieved, released now uh, gave us, gives, gives us um, a lot of uh, clues of what was shared on the superficial level in the study of vibration. So I think that um, what I'm going to share with you, the, the thing it, it made me feel so so humble. It made me feel so um, having a role to play that the responsibility of it is as enormous as my imagination and my uh, biggest dream can even fulfill, you know? That too. And so many other things. Maybe <clears throat> I leave it for today. I know that uh, there's something behind my thought there that I, I wanted to share, but uh, maybe I don't uh, keep on blabbering for a while. Huh? <laughs> Thank you for listening. I'm very happy that uh, this session is <clears throat> now taking place in my heart has a lot of more meaning that he had in 2008 and continue to mean a lot. Dakaya, Dakaya to you and then to the
and Maria San, the Papua in Santo, who released all this session and all this beautiful work that she's doing. So much. Welcome to.